Hello and welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And on screen we've got a puzzle by none other than Fistemafell, the genius constructor from Germany. And, well, one of my favourite constructors for sure. Uh, now, interesting puzzle today. This is just a bog-standard killer Sudoku. Uh, but Mark has had a go at this. Um, and he didn't use the word approachable today. He used the word monstrous. I'm actually not sure whether Mark even managed to solve it. So this um, this could be a very long and or difficult video, uh, I think. Um, before we kick off, a couple of things to mention. Uh, firstly, if you own our Sandwich Sudoku app or our Classic Sudoku app, um, the apps have been updated in the last couple of days with new puzzles. So there are 10 new puzzles uh, on both of those apps. Um, so yeah, check those out. As I say, very, we're very proud of the apps and the new puzzles should prove diverting at least. Um, also, for those of you who are patrons of the channel on Patreon, we have got um, two things at the moment. We've got our monthly reward puzzle for September, which has just come out yesterday. And that's two Tour de France themed uh, Sudokus. And also we've got Mark Solve of the Times monthly cryptic crossword special, this brutal, brutal puzzle that uh, I think only Mark is able to solve dictionary lists. Um, so that is also worth watching. It's one of those videos I look out for each month. Um, now, the other thing I just want to mention before we get on to Fistemafell's uh, Killer Sudoku is I have noted that uh, he's put up another star battle puzzle um, in the last few days over on Logic Masters Germany. And these are normally quite popular. In fact, I've had a request literally about two minutes ago for whether we can solve it. I'm not sure whether I'll solve it on the channel or I'll do it as a bonus for our patrons, but I will try and solve it for you in the coming days. Um, also, just to note, look, you can see this is the new software again today. Things like this are possible, but we shouldn't need that today. I don't think we have to put zeros in the um, Killer Sudoku, but yeah, this is this is me trying out the new software that Sven has created for us. Um, so yeah, it's really, really a nice thing. And hopefully you guys will be able to try it very soon. Now, what are the rules of Killer Sudoku? Well, I'm sure most of you are familiar with them. What we have to do is fill the normal Sudoku rules. So we've got to fill each row, each column and each box with the digits one to nine without repeating a digit. In the killer cages, we've got to make sure those three squares add up to 20 without repeating a digit. And that's it. That's all the rules. Um, now, Fistemafell, oh yeah, I need to tell you, Fistemafell calls this puzzle the knot. And I think that might be because there's sort of that shape made out of cages in the middle of the grid. I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether the knot is a hint to this shape or it's a hint to how we have to solve the puzzle. I don't know any techniques called the knot. The only knot I think I've heard of recently is the Conway knot, which you may have read about. Um, Lisa Picarillo uh, very recently solved a 50-year-old maths problem um, about something called slice in the context of knots. I have no idea what that is, but I do know if it took 50 years to solve it. Uh, if it takes me anything like that to solve this puzzle, then my hard drive will run out of space. Um, anyway, do have a go at the puzzle first. The way to play, click the link under the video as usual. And with that, I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, now, as I was putting this into our software, I did notice rather alarmingly that this puzzle doesn't appear to have a great deal of given information in the sense that there are a sum total of zero killer Sudoku cages, which only have one option. So often with killer Sudoku, you know, you get a cage which has, you know, it's three cells long and it has a 24 clue and you know it's seven, eight and nine, but Fistemafell doesn't like to make things easy. So there's a couple of six cages and a five cage. All of those six can only be two of two, four or one, five. Five can only be two, three or one, four, but they still do have two options. 15, there's a couple of those, look, they also have two options, either six, nine, or seven, eight. Ah, there's something I've got, look. A very small, a very small piece of logic. These four squares add to 27. So I know one of these cells must contain a nine because the, uh, if you add up eight, seven, six, and five, you only get to 26. So we know there's a nine in one of these four cells. Same at the bottom, look, there's a nine in one of those four cells. I don't think that's going to be enough to crack the puzzle. Um, in fact, I'm not quite, I really am not sure what I'm meant to do here. 
maybe I've got to look at this knot. The thing about the knot though is that it's not all within one box by any means and in fact often with sort of geometry tricks in Killer Sudoku you can find a cell that sees a lot of other cells and it's sort of ah I can now see a restriction but here you know, if we pick any cells on this knot and sort of I don't quite see what we're meant to do actually um, I'm going to abandon the knot I can't unravel the knot uh, so <laughs> what do we do to start this puzzle um, got some big numbers in column six and seven Uh, got some low numbers in row three and four apart from the 20 cage that's not very helpful ah no now hang on though there is there is something I've just noticed which is that if we look generally at the rough shape of these two or these four columns you can see that yeah there's something going on look if we highlight these cells these cells are surrounded in their columns by some quite large dominoes not enormous dominoes but quite large dominoes which would imply that the yellow cells would on average be lower than average digits but if we look at the, this row and these two rows then you can see if we take these cells because the dominoes sort of spanning these cells are small that would suggest these yellow digits have got to be high digits on average so the columns I'll push it well it's these four cells I think it's these cells here the columns are pushing these cells downwards and the rows are pushing them upwards so there is there is some sort of restriction on those cells but I'm not quite sure I'm not quite sure how best to maybe we just do arithmetic do we is that what we're meant to do uh, I've got nothing better I'm going to do arithmetic so let's look at the sum total of these yellow cells so I'll make them purple um, so arithmetic how are we going to do arithmetic we know that those cells those 36 cells I've just summed I've just highlighted in the grid they must add up to 180 how do I know that well I know that any row of a Sudoku adds up to 45 because it will contain all the digits from 1 to 9 and we've got four complete rows here so the purple squares add up to 180 minus the sum of all of these cells which is 30 44 okay so 136 so the purple squares add up to 136. Now sometimes in Sudoku, when you do mathematics, you come up with numbers that mean something to you and you think, aha, that's super because now I understand something. But 136 means nothing to me. Um, right. I've got an awful feeling about this puzzle that I am going along a complete red herring here and there is an easier way to think about this <laughs> so I've got this horrible nagging suspicion anyway we'll carry on let's let's now look at the columns instead so if we look at these cells what do we again obviously we've got four complete columns they add up to 180 so these highlighted cells add up to 180 minus the contents of uh, the dominoes sort of spanning 
Let's uh, do this. So these cells. Now, what do these cells add up to? Have we got any good options? 50, 80. Ah. Okay. So the blue cells add up to 100. They add up to 180 minus 80, so 100. So the blue squares add up to 100, but in fact, let's make the 2 by 2s in the middle a different color. Oops, pick the wrong ones. These ones. So the blue squares In fact, we can state this more simply than I was thinking. What we can state this as is the purple squares minus the blue squares equals 36. That, that is what we're saying here, isn't it? Because if we're saying that the green squares plus the purple squares equal 136, but we're saying the green squares plus the blue squares equal 100, then I can just take one of those equations from the other and get purple minus blue equals 36. Now, is th that is quite a big restriction because, yeah, that is quite a big restriction, actually. If I make the blue squares as small as I can, so let's do that, actually. Let's just make all of these 1, 2, 3, and 4. If these were all 1, 2, 3, and 4, the blue squares would add to 20, and that would mean the purple squares have to add to 20 plus 36. That's 56. Now, 56 is quite high. I mean, the maximum you could ever make the purple squares would be 60. If I put 6, 7, 8, 9 in them. So there is there are not many degrees of freedom. We can't... The blue squares might not add up to 20, but they can't add up to very much more than 20. The maximum they could add up to is 24. So the blue squares add up to 20, 21, 22, 23, or 24. And the purple squares add up to... 56, 57, 58, 59, or 60. Now, can we close the gap? You can see immediately, actually, that this, I mean, it's never going to work anyway, because the gap between the blues and the purples in this puzzle is not 36, it's 40. But if we did have this arrangement, you'd have a big problem, because all those squares are naked singles, and they all have to equal 5, which is clearly... Um, not going to work. So we need to somehow narrow down the options here. Aha! Uh -huh. Aha! Uh -huh. This is interesting. This is very interesting because I know the purples have to be reasonably large, but I can't make those two cells too small, because if those are small, this square would become greater than 9. In fact, if these are 6, 7, 8, and 9, these two squares have to be 4 and 5, because I need this square. If they're any less, this square would have to be 10 or more. That is, that is weird. That is weird. And it, oh no! Oh, actually, hang on. And this is broken. Ah, look at this cell. If this was the setup, this square would have to be a one, two, or a three. And now, obviously, I can't put the numbers one. Well, the the, the point would be these would have to then move above their minimum. Oh no! Look at oh, this is very clever and I don't think I understand it but look oh this is weird this is weird oh my god <laughs> okay so this 12 is a bit like this 18 because if these are minimums look what can I put into these two squares the only option would be 5 and 6 because if I don't put 5 and 6 in if I put, put, say, 5 and 7 in, this square would have to be a 0, which I didn't think I was going to use. But um, So if these are minimums, this has to be 5 and 6 to put 1 there.
but then this would have to be 7, 8, 9, and that would clash with this column. Oh, good grief, there's... Uh, oh, no. Um, so this cell, I think, it's sort of... It's pinioned by... It's pinched by this column and this row. So whatever we put in here is very constraining on this and very constraining on this. This cell, I feel, is the key to the puzzle. I, w I don't think this puzzle should be called the knot. It should be called row 8, column 8. Um, the problem is that I don't... I don't feel I quite understand... Because obviously... I've put one, two, threes, and fours in, and six, sevens, eights, and nines, but these are very unlikely to be correct. And in fact, I don't think they can be correct in the puzzle because, well, they can't be. They can't be. This square would be a naked single. It would be a five. And then these two squares would have to add up to more than 12. And these two squares would have to be too small so this square would have to add up to more than nine so we know for sure this is not correct but we don't quite know how it's incorrect if you see what I mean because whatever I put in here it's quite actually it's quite interesting because we've got four degrees of freedom to play with so by playing around with, if I do try five in here, just as, just for the sake of exposition, how many degrees of freedom does that use up in column eight? So you could see immediately, we couldn't use a four or five pair at the top, so we'd have to remove a five. But now the next best digit we could use would be three. 3 gives us a problem, because now I can't use 4 with the 3, because 3 and 4 add to 7, and that would make that square an 11. So I couldn't use 4 with the 3, I'd have to change the 4 as well as the 5. The five. And the minimum I could change it by, I would have to make this a 6, that would be the best I could do. If I make it 7, I'm going to use up even more degrees of freedom. But to use the minimum, to, if I make this 5, the best I do up here is 3, 6. 6 has to be removed from these as an option and replaced with the next highest digit, which is 4. So if this is 5, the absolute best case in terms of using up the smallest degrees of freedom I can in column 8 would be this arrangement. And that's... That, you, that has used up two of my degrees of freedom. I've got four degrees of freedom to play with because I know I know that the high digits have to sum in total to 60, 59, 58, 57 or 56. And I've just used two of them because this used to be, the best this could be, would be 9, 8, 7 and 6. And now by putting five here, I've used up two of them. But this 5 hasn't done all its work yet, because it's also affecting this 5-6 pair. So, let's look at what it does here. So, if, it, if we take 5 out of here, because this is a 5, the next highest digit I could put in would be 7. 7 is no good. 7 and 6 is too high, so I've got to remove the 6. And in order to keep the degrees of freedom down to a minimum, I can replace it with a 4 which removes 4 from here, and the next lowest digit I could replace it with would be 6, and 1, 2, 3, and 6 add to 12. The minimum we could make those was 10, so I've now used all my degrees of freedom. So if this is 5, if this is 5, this is forced. But it might not be 5. But then the question would be, what happens if it's not 5? If we use other digits, if we put 4 in here, what does that do? I think 
if we get put four in there, I should go back to the start. Let me just. So let's comp let's see what four does. If we remove, if we take four out of as a op option for those squares, therefore, what's the best I can now put in here? It's going to be seven. So this ah this is interesting. This is interesting. So by moving this digit down, I consume more degrees of freedom in row eight, but less in column eight. Look, because let's restore the what we had in originally here. We had six, seven, eight, and nine. Delete. These two squares were four and five, weren't they? So if this is four. I don't disturb any of these ab initio. This has to not be 4. The next highest digit it can be is 3. We need these to add up to at least 9. This is so strange. So this has to be 3, 6. The 6 is all here. Can't then 4 be 6. That becomes 5. So if we use 4 here, We now use three. De we use three degrees of freedom in row eight and one degree of freedom in column eight to give us. So we've used our four degrees of freedom again. So is it true to say that whatever we put in here, we all? I think we whatever we do, we always use all of the degrees of freedom, adjusting these so such that these this twelve and this eighteen work because this twelve and eighteen are sort of the key bits of the but maybe that's part of the knot maybe you have to that's the idea is to view the knot as the whole the fact that this 18 and this 12 both have an effect on this cell is so so peculiar it's typical fist of bell it's just head mind bending absolutely mind bending anyway i want to try Another, I want to try a higher digit in here just to convince myself that this is reasonable um, as a strategy. So let's go back to here and think about what 7 does. Oh, 7's going to break. 7's going to break immediately, isn't it? Because, well, if I remove 7 from there, the next best digit I can put in is three. Every other every other high digit has gone. And now I've used up all four degrees of freedom on column eight before I even uh, in fact that would that would that would be okay. Because I don't use up any degrees of freedom along here, because none of these uh, options are the number seven. That's interesting. So that is interesting. Although this breaks for a different reason, actually. I've just seen why this breaks. It breaks because that's a naked single and that has to be a five. And this square here can't be a, s because I can't move these. If I've used up all four degrees of freedom by m messing about with column eight, everything else has to stay static. So this, becomes a 5 and this square now has no option because it wants to be a 5 as well. So actually maybe that is that always the case if I use all four degrees of freedom on one of these sets of dominoes yeah that's 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 fascinating sorry I know I'm rambling here but I'm trying to get my head around this puzzle and it is absolutely it's really amazing because yeah if I use up all four degrees of freedom on one sort of one row or one column let's say I move these by four the point is then you get repeated fives there because they're both naked singles if I use just as we've just seen if I use all four degrees of freedom here these two squares have both got to be five. So that breaks. So I can never use all my degrees of freedom on 
on one set of these dominoes. And that means this square, this square can't be, this is, this must be four, five, or six then. Because if it's seven or three or lower, or, well, if it's lower, you use up more than four degrees of freedom, surely. You, you can see that sort of, it's pretty obvious. If I put a two there, then the best I could make this string of digits now would be one, three, four, and seven. And one, three, four, and seven add up to 15. Whereas at the moment, these squares add up to 10. So I've moved by five and that's too much. So this has to be four, five, or six. I still don't know what these dominoes are filled with, but I'm starting to understand the restriction that's applying to them. Now, now, hang on. Two things uh, I'm thinking about now. How long have we been going? 26 minutes. I don't think that's that bad. I know I've not got any digits in the grid. I never have any digits in the grid on these hard puzzles nowadays. They are just getting so difficult. Um, now, this square, whatever I put in this square consumes all the degrees of freedom for this ring of colors around the grid. And it, uh, and it, uh, it consumes them all in these four dominoes. It doesn't, it must not affect these four dominoes. So these four dominoes are the digits one, two, three, four, and six, seven, eight, and nine. Because if I move these as well, then in consuming degrees of freedom up here, this one will then break because we know this is moving these dominoes by four. And sorry if I'm repeating myself, but it's it's mainly for my own benefit actually. I'm just trying to get this clear in my head. So these are, so this is, this is the hardest naked single in the world. That is a five, because if I can't move these, the only option for this cell is five. Now the problem is I don't, this doesn't cause an elimination here, because this is just for exposition. It probably is true to say these have to add up to nine though, but they might not be a four five pair. Let me just think about that. Is it the case? Yes, it is the case. It is absolutely the case. If I try, let me show you. If I try and let's put five in here for the sake of exposition. And I'm now going to try and make either this domino or this domino not add up to the very maximum that it can. And what we're going to find, I'm sure, is that I'm going to use up more than four degrees of freedom in these dominoes. So let's check that. So if this is five, this can't be five, six anymore. So the next highest number available but would be seven. Now we can't use seven and six, but now instead of going to the most reasonable digit, which would be a four, let's imagine I think it might be possible for me to put a three in here. What does that do to the world? Well, it puts a two there. That's one of the things it does. But now by removing three from these squares, What's the next best digit I can now put in here? That's going to be six. And this is going to be absolutely broken, isn't it? Because we know this side of the equipment, this side is using up two degrees of freedom. We did that earlier. How many degrees of freedom have I used up here? I've gone from 10 to 13, that's three. That's why this has to add to 11. So that is helpful. That is helpful, actually, it is helpful because that means this square is a nine and this square is a one. This square is not necessarily a five. I don't know what this square is yet, except it's a four, five or a six. I'm tempted to get rid of the pencil marks now. Is there anything more we can learn about column eight or row eight of the grid from this analysis? Actually, there might be, you know, there might be. Uh, 
So we can't take four degrees of freedom from one place. So the maximum we can take from one place would be three degrees of freedom. I'm just wondering, in terms of the options for this 12 cage, I'm suspecting that in order to keep the degrees of freedom down to a reasonable level, I can never take one, two, and three out of out of these these particular cells. And similarly, I can't take seven, eight, and nine out of these cells. I always have to mess about, I think, with the Well, it'd be the top digit in this case, because it's going to be nearest to the digit I have to replace it with. Now, is that true? Is it possible, for example, for this to be 3, 8? Let's forget this for a moment. Is that possible? You can see that we could, we'd have to take the 3 out. The best digit we can replace the 3 with now is a 5. But this, this breaks, this breaks, because now this, the best digit I can put this in here would be 6. And I've already gone from 10 here to 12, so I've used 2 degrees of freedom here. And by making this 6, aren't I using up another 3 degrees of freedom here? I think I am. Let me double check my memory is serving me correctly. I have to go from 6 to 3, that's the best I can do. That is the best I can do. And you may say, ah, oh, no, it's not the best you can do because you could replace the 3. You could move the 3 out of here and replace it with a 5, say. Well, let's try that. Let's see if that works. It won't. If we put a 5 in here, now what am I going to put up here? You can see I can no longer get to uh, a digit that is, I can no longer make these add up to nine unless I pinch another high digit from here. So that's that's why there is a problem. And here, obviously, I've gone from six, seven, eight, nine, which adds up to 30, to three, seven, eight, nine, which adds up to 27. So I've used three degrees of freedom here and two degrees of freedom here that's five which is too many so this this is never three eight and for the exactly the same reason it's not going to be possible to put a seven eight or nine in here now that actually that might be important oh, hang on, I've just spotted something if if we come back to this position in fact, I'm now going to remove everything from these cells. So if we come back to this position, don't know what that is yet either. <laughs> don't know what anything is. I, I do know that's four, five, or six. I'm definitely keeping that in there. But if I know that I can't put nine and eight in here because it uses up too many degrees of freedom here, where where do I put eight and nine in row eight? Breakthrough. Breakthrough. Because now 8 and 9 have to go in those squares. And that's a 9. So that gives us another two digits. And presumably, I can do the same down here. If these squares can't contain 7, 8, and 9, and they can't, or 7, 8 here because there's already a 9, then where does one and two go in this column? They can't go in this domino because they'd need to accompany a seven or an eight. They must go in those two squares. This is a one, so that ah, there's some bananas symmetry going on. I'm sure some of you are watching this and going, oh, it's obvious, but it's certainly not obvious to me. Um,
Okay. <laughs> what do I do now? Um... I don't know. I genuinely haven't got a clue. I really like to know the value of this cell. I feel that would be this cell is the most important cell in the puzzle. Um Goodness me. Uh <laughs> This square, maybe. The options for this square are two, oops. Just by Sudoku now for a change, a two, three, and four. But we know that this can't be a nine or an eight because of these nine and eights. So this has to be a four. This has to be a seven. These two squares, therefore, are a two, three pair. Oh, four removes a four from that square, and that's the key square. So we're honing in on the value of this. But maybe we can. Oh, we can. We can, of course. This square now might be revealed to us because we've got one, two, three, four, five in the row. This square has to be a 6, 7, or an 8. But that means that square's got to be a 1, 2, or a 3, and it can't be a 1 or a 2. Yes, 3, 6. This is a 5. I would love to know in the comments if there is an easier way of working out the value of this digit. I have a horrible feeling that there is something very simple that would have given me this digit more quickly, but at least I have got it 37 minutes into the puzzle. Um, now, this is this is quite interesting as well, look. So in the end, it turned out that these were one, two, three, and six, look. So these added to 12, we're gonna use up, and we get four, seven, eight, and nine here. So the six became a four in the column, and the four became six in the row, and that's how our four degrees of freedom got used up. Wow, okay. Oh, this three gives me that square. Look, that's a two now, so that's a three. This two five means that square's got to be a one or a four, which means that square's got to be a two or a five. Just looking at the six cage. These two, oh, these two squares are a seven, eight pair. There's a seven here, so it's similar there, look. In fact, we've got, yeah, look at this. It's just classic Vistamafel again. We've got absolute symmetry in the cells we've managed to deduce. Um, well, that does suggest we're at least on the right track. Goodness me. Oh, I've got something. I've got something, something else. We look right at the start. I said there had to be a 9 in these yellow squares because they add to 27. Well, where do I put a 9 in column uh, 1 there for? It's got to go there. It's the only place it can go. It can't go in this box because I'm going to do it just because it pleases me. That's not possible. Um, ah, so here, look. We know these two 13s are going to have to be 5, 8, and 6, 7. So those two squares must be a 2-4 pair. That 2-4 pair is nice because now this 6 cage can't be a 2-4 pair. That must be a 1-5 pair. There's a 1 here. Happy days. We Oh, this 1 gives us a 4 there and a 2 there. Now surely we can get this now. It can't be 1-8-2-7 or 4-5-3-6 is what it is. We must put that in like that. Neither of those squares can be a 6 or a 9. Uh, seven eight pair so that means we get a six nine pair outside it these two squares are ah, one of them's got to be a one so it's going to be that one because of this one up here and that square all the way down there needs to be a five this box we've got one, four, oh, we've got one, four, five to place. But this square can't be a four and it can't be a one. So that's a five, that's an eight. 
These two must be six and seven now. The 15 cage can't be a 7, 8, 15 cage because if it is, I'd have to put 3, 9 in the 12 cage and I can't. So this is 6, 9. This one we don't know. 6, 9 pair though in this bot. In fact, that's a naked single. That's got to be a 3 because 1, 2 and 4 have all gone. This square again is a naked single. That's got to be a 7. Seven lives in one of these cells in box nine, so it doesn't live in that cell. Oh, that's quite interesting. Look, where does five go in row one? Well, it can't go here because of that five, and it can't go here because that would put seven there and clash. So the five can only go in one of those two cells which means this square is a five by Sudoku. These two squares have got to add up to 15. And uh, there's probably a way of resolving that, but I can't see what it is. That square can't be a nine. That square can't be an eight. Okay. Sorry, I'm now stuck. This is unsurprising. It's happened a lot in this puzzle so far. This four though, that gives me that square. That's got to be an eight. That's not a one. So the one is in one of those two positions in that box. Maybe we can do some arithmetic on this row, look, because we've got 15 and 12 is 27, plus 2 and 1 is 30, plus 5 is 35. These two squares have got to add up to 10 without using 1, 9 or 2, 8. So these two squares are 4, 6 or 3, 7. If it was 3, 3 7, it would be that way around. 3, 4, 6, 4, 6, 7. Aha! Uh -huh. Yes, where does three go in this column now? Can't go here because of this three. It can't go in those two squares because we've pencil marked them. So it does go in the nine, which means it goes this way round. That six gives us a nine here. That gives us a six here. Gives us a nine, gives us a six. I refuse to use the phrase cooking with gas for a fist and bell puzzle. It would be entirely inappropriate. Um, My brain feels like it's been cooked in gas. That's what's happened. That square's got to be a nine. That's got to be a three. Therefore, that's not a three. So this is a four, six pair. We can get rid of the seven from that square. Seven can only live here in the column now, which means this, I think that's 12 cage, isn't it? So this must be four and eight. And there's an eight here. So we know the order. That's eight, that's four, that's two. This square should be a five. This six means that this is a four. That means that's a six, that's a two, that's a four. The five cage must be a two, three, five cage because it can't be a four, one. Yeah, that's working. Two, three. Oh, please don't make a mistake. Gosh, that would be awful. Three must go here. Nine must go here. This is a 20 cage. This is interesting, isn't it? So this part of the knot here is only, I'm only just using it, assuming this is part of the knot even. Maybe the knot refers to the fact that there was this sort of weird pivot in the grid around this cell and it was, it's sort of, and not in the sense it was tying this side of the grid to, to that side of the grid. I don't know, it's interesting. Um, if I, uh, Fister Maffel does sometimes email me, so if, I, if he does explain, I'll be very interested to know, or probably what will happen actually, is that the comments will reveal that I've completely misunderstood this puzzle and I should have done it a completely different way. Um, anyway, forgot that square's got to be a six. Me rambling on. Um, 
that means that's a 7 and that's a 6, look. So this can't be a 2 or a 6 anymore. So if we look up here, we're looking for 1, 3 and 8. So we can place the 8, we can place the 1, we can place the 3. The square is a 7, obviously. This 8 gives us the 1, 8 resolved. This 15 is 7 and 8. We can do that. This square can't be a 1 because there's a 1 in the box already. So this is a 2, 6 pair, which again is resolved. And now we get to use the 11 cage at last. So those two squares have got to add to 9. This can't be an 8, therefore. That's got to be a 4. That's a 5. It's still working, I think. Good. This 4 means this is a 1. This square is a naked single. That's a 4. This 4 is very nice. Look, 4, 1, 1, 2. 2 must go here. And these squares must include a 9. So the 9 goes there. 9, 4... That means this is a 7 to complete this box and this column and the 7 and the 8 get resolved. And I think I've solved the puzzle. I'm not, I'm not certain. What does that say? Yes, looks good to me. I'm quite proud of that. I'm quite proud to get through that, even though I have a horrible feeling, as I've said, that I've, I've butchered the logic in it. Do, do let me know in the comments. This sometimes happens with live solving is that um, as, as you guys comment sometimes, I go off on wild goose chases, but at least I managed to solve it in the end. And what a, I mean, it's a brilliant puzzle. It's a brilliant puzzle. The idea that there is a sort of push me, pull me relationship between the columns and the rows that relates to these boxes and that, that allows you to hone in on the dominoes, realize that there's sort of a high, high set and a low set, and then this bizarre thing going on with the 18 and the 12 pivoting around this square. I mean, you, you cannot say anything, but this is just about the most original thing you've ever seen in your life. It is absolutely brilliant. Thank you to Fistamafel, as always. I'm now going to go and have a large gin and tonic. And um, thank you for watching. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.